the way we are moving forward is going to be an encouragement to each one of the people. Okay. President, sir, in continuation to your guidance, we are very happy that this is the fifth hackathon. That means we have already completed 40 excellent speakers who have been the panelists on different subjects in AI. And these all happen to be mostly chartered accountants. You will be happy to know the videos which are being posted on different platforms by various uh, panelists is actually being appreciated across the length and breadth of the country. Good evening, esteemed colleagues, distinguished guests, and all the brilliant minds gathered here today evening. It is both an honor and privilege to welcome you to AI Hackathon 5, an event that truly epitomizes the pioneering spirit and intellectual curiosity of our profession. Today we gather to celebrate the remarkable intersection of two powerful forces, artificial intelligence and finance. Let's start with a round of applause to our very esteemed president, CA Ranjit Nagarwal, and my fellow council colleagues, CA Dhyaniva Sharma and CA Omej Sharma. Their, their visionary leadership and unwavering support continues to be the backbone of our vibrant society and community of chartered accountants. Let me compliment the this committee leadership. Uh, issued had first time started hackathon. Many people are don't know what is hackathon. So this committee has started the word hackathon under leadership of Dayaliwa Sarma and Umesh Sarma. And this is the fifth one. And thank you very much for making this entire terminology so popular amongst the masses of our CF fraternity. And uh, wherever I am also going, people are interested to join this AI uh, committee of the ICI. So thank you, Raj, uh, Ranjit sir, and thank you, Nanda sir. And uh, Ranjit sir, your vision of AI in ICI, it's the first time you have dreamed and we are following that dream under chairmanship of Daya Neva sir. So thank you, sir. And uh, let's wish that all your dreams get true in this AI in ICI in year 2020-24. Thank you, sir. So today's use case that I'm going to be taking up is uh, for consolidation of our financials. The technique that I'm going to be using is uh, using of VBA codes for generating, uh, so use of AI for generating the VBA code, codes. So what happens in our uh, smaller firms, uh, you know, a lot of time we have uh, clients who have multiple branches or multiple DST numbers. So for that, we need to maintain the uh, data as a separate entity. And at the year end, what happens is one of our, uh, you know, one of our article or someone tries to collate this data manually or by use of some, uh, you know, software. But uh, what happens is every client's data or, you know, every client must be using different software. So we do get stuck and uh, there is a scope of a lot of errors. So what I've done here is I've tried to generate a macro. Uh, now we all know that generating a macro is, uh, you know, the best technique for using any repetitive action. Yet we are not able to actually uh, use it for optimization because what happens is the macro also has limitations. Like, you know, if you are inserting any cell in the whole macro, the whole macro goes for a toss. If you want to add any action, the whole code goes for a toss. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate the, uh, you know, take the help of AI to generate the codes better and which are more uh, relevant to the given file. So let me start by going to the file. So here what I have done is I have taken uh, the two data of two companies which are, you know, divided into accounts, parents group, debit balance and credit balance. What I have here is a trial balance of one company and a trial balance of second company. Now, what I'm going to do is, what I've done is I've created a master data for all these, uh, you know, accounts. Like if this is an account, what is the parent group, master group, pen group, and pen object. You can name it differently, but basically it reflects to the kind of uh, detailing that you want to go at. Now, uh, when I want to create a macro, usually what we do is we go here and, uh, you know, we start imitating the action. So the first thing I want to do here is like, you know, create a column called as net amount here, which will eventually consolidate my data and give me a pivot of the same. So usually what I do is I start this macro. Let me name it as console. Yeah. 
created and uh, sorry on record macro for this console yeah i'm gonna replace that yeah and i'm gonna do certain action but what happens a lot of time these actions are either not captured properly or if i'm entering a inserting a line or if i want is formatting this goes for a toss so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take the help of ai i'm gonna stop recording this macro I'll go to chat GPT. I'll go and upload this file into chat GPT. First demo file. Now, can I use this technique with a free version? The answer is yes, but I'll still face a problem, which is like, you know, my range and references might go for a toss. Whereas if I have a updated version, I can upload the file. So if I am making an error or if I'm not very particular about giving the right reference, the chat GPT will still understand it. And the ma my macro code will be up to the maximum limitation. So let me just write this code for you. Let me uh, modify it. Easy for this workbook. Okay, now I'll just first step I do is I'll upload this file and I'll tell them to write a modified BDJ code so that, you know, the file has been given reference to. I've created certain prompts already. So I'm telling, I'll take this four prompts together. Okay, I'm seeing in the column E of this workbook, clear this column, put net amount here or the word net here and give me a difference of these uh, two columns C and D here. And also repeat this process for company two sheet as well. So let me just do this. So the a particular code which would have taken me like, you know, hours to generate AI is giving me within like seconds. So, so what I do here is I go ahead and I have this code all right. Remember I've created that macro called as console. Let me just go here, edit it, copy it, paste it, and then just run it through. Now, what I have is, yeah, I have the column net in company one as well as company two. The next thing I want to do is I want to have console uh, data here and I have, I want a certain header here, which I have already taken it in my prompt. But I want the data headers to be accounts, A, B, C, so and so forth. And I also want to format this. So let me just go ahead and add, add this command from here, which will tell me, and below action to the above. Yeah. So I just told the AI that what I need as a header and what should be, uh, you know, how it should be formatted. So let's see if it's working out or not. And while it is being done, let me see, let me show you whether this command also works for something that I've already removed. So let me remove this particular line and we'll rerun this code. So this code is still being generated. Let us give it a minute to finish it. Okay. That's the second. Yeah. So I'll just go ahead and copy the code here. Paste it. This is coming in between. Yeah. Let me do the connection. Yeah. And let's run it. So as you can see, what I had removed, it has again repopulated it. I have the headers correctly. And what I have done, I'll just quickly walk through. I'll not take a lot of time. What I've done is I've taken then, you know, uh, yeah, I have then given a command that paste the data from both the sheet into uh, the window then and delete column BCD because I don't need the debit and credit eventually. I need the net amount in there. So let us do that. So 
So what happens in this particular case is if it so happens that, you know, someone end up setting a row or a column or, you know, ends up doing something with the current macro, what you just simply need to do is upload this macro into the VBA, sorry, in the AI chat GPT. And you need to uh, simply go ahead and, uh, you know, ask them to regenerate the code saying that, you know, this particular uh, line has been in inserted. They will just, the chat GPT will give you a code which will adjust to the whole thing without disturbing okay, the... Two minutes right? remaining. Sorry? Two remaining. So let me do this thing very quickly. So I've already created this uh, console file for you. Let me just close this sheet. Yeah, this file is already consolidated with the given prompt. So what the file is doing is again a set of action which is giving the command. So let me show this. I'll just remove this whole console sheet. This net number, this company number. And what happens is I've assigned this macro already to this button and I go ahead and I give this command. So what this one button does it, it creates that net, net impact, take the consolidated entry, put it into the data. And one more important, important thing, which I couldn't get to it. In the console data, it is we looking up every field, which is like every bifurcation I've given the master group financial object, which is where, the, where it is. It is asking me if it should replace the pivot because I've given the code in that manner. The pivot should be reinserted every time. So if you see the console data, what it has done on its own, it has, uh, you know, applied VLOOKUPs directly from the master sheet. And eventually it is giving me a pivot created of the same number from, uh, from that data. So now what I need to just simply do is go ahead and link this number to my, uh, you know, schedule three on my final balances without wasting any time. And you can also check if, uh, you know, the company data, which I have been created here, I have around 314 data and yeah, 571 data and the console data is taking this whole thing clearly. So it is one of the use case which I have used to like, you know, consolidate Thank the whole you. thing. Thank you, okay. okay. Thank you, Saba, for a beautiful analysis of the company one, company two use case, and it will be used for the many of CAs who go do the group audits or a group uh, consolidation. And this was a one of a very practical use case. And you have very beautifully taken the macros uh, from macros to VBA, VBA to chat GPT-4, then again back to macros. And this was uh, is a basic thing that you can do there is no need uh, of uh, any uh, AI or any certification. It is uh, inbuilt in Excel and it is just that you have to use this use case and you have shown it in very simple way. So thank you Sabah for your use case.